Greetings, people. Praise the Lord for his goodness and mercy endures forever. You know, uh, I've been studying a lot. I have so many Bibles, and that meaning translations of all kinds. And uh, the one thing that has bothered me for years and years that we only have one God, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the true, the truth, the way and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through Him. Yet, we have these religious, uh, lawful traditions of men, and on the top of it, all these different dominations. And every time, you know, I talk to people and when I pray for them and they get healed or when I cast out demons out of them, the, well, usually not any at that point, but I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. So simple that anybody can understand because uh, the Bible is really clear about things. The Bible is simple if you know how to read. And God told you to seek Him. And seeking is studying and meditating, seeking, as looking through the Greek concordances, look into Hebrew, look into Aramaic, look into the different languages to interpret the word what is written for you to understand his word everything is made so so horribly wrong in that way because it's simple it's simple just like if you want to be a bodybuilder what do you got to do first of all you have to know what kind of a body you have do you uh, have a uh, mesomorphic do you have endomorphic or do you have there's like three body types i'm not going to go into that but you have to know where to start there's always a starting point why do you want to start doing something it's a choice it's a choice of way of doing you know you have to start from somewhere there's always the basic and the groundwork just like starting out up with horses from the the minute they're born you have to start interacting with them tell them that you're you're to be trusted you know you don't have to be afraid of me i'm the predator in the in the prey animals eyes you have to desensitize them just you know it's all up to you what kind of a basis what kind of a groundwork you start with you know when you get born again it's not automatic you have to believe first of all you have to believe that jesus christ is the truth jesus christ walked upon this earth jesus christ is god he is the alpha and omega in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god that that's in john it starts it, it already re reveals that jesus christ is god he is the creator of all things he is the lord of spirits now if you already if i already lost you you need to rewind and you know go through and read what it says it's simple as that you have to read how would you how do you know the bible how do you know the word of god if you do not read what your father has written for you to reprove and when you believe there's a lot of doctrines of devils there's a sinner's prayer I'm the bad guy over here, but I'm letting you know that the sinner's prayer is not biblical. That's a heresy. That's heretic. And I know who started it. Uh, there was a revival through that. Maybe some good, maybe not. But you have to check if you really, truly are saved. Because everything that is not in the Bible is not biblical. You know, there's the doctrines of devils. There's the wolves in the churches. They're telling you the things you want to hear so you wouldn't be offended. They think about your emotional side and who you are as a 
human being more than who you are in spirit because God is a spirit and anyone who prays to him have to worship and pray in, in the spirit. God is spirit. The doctrines of the devil and the doctrines and traditions of men are doing all invalid. <sighs> okay, so this is such a huge thing, but if you do not seek, how will you find? If you want to be a bodybuilder, what do you do? So you will be a bodybuilder. If you want to learn something new, what do you have to do to learn something new? It's all about seeking. Seek so much information that you can read it and do it. Doing the Word of God. It's to do. Now, faith without works is dead. Now, anyone can call that, okay, wrong, wrong word. So, your domina, dom, dominion, dominations, or whatever you want to call it, isn't who you are in Christ. That's not who you are. It's all about who you are and how much you have faith, how much you know and have the relationship with Jesus Christ, God. Do you know your Father? I mean, it's ridiculous. Now, when you look at the Roman Catholics, they have all the money in the world. They have all those things. And now they're pushing their evil agenda upon people that all religions are the same. Well, religion is already from the devil. Because what did Jesus tell you to do? It is, if you can read, it's, it's in the Bible. Follow me now that is what jesus said follow me pick up your cross and follow me didn't he say that it doesn't say follow the dominion of roman catholics follow the demon of uh whoever there's like three leavings follow the protestants i will get into all of these all of these dominions that they call themselves. We're not to follow a dominion. When people ask me, what dominion do you belong to? I belong to the dominion of Jesus Christ. I am the follower of Jesus Christ. And people don't get it that, well, what is your dominion? Well, my dominion is Jesus Christ. I follow Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do you want me to spell it out for you? And I'm not being mean or arrogant or anything like that. But if you put your mindset about in, well, Paul said it, you know, we're not to follow or follow Paul or Peter or Andrew. We're not to follow them. We're to follow Jesus Christ to become like Jesus Christ because the greater one is in me than he that is in the world. You have to understand that if you want to be, let's go into the carnality again so you guys will understand. Uh, I always use the bodybuilding thing because I've been there. I've been there over for 30, over 30 years, so I know what I'm talking about. So I will ca call it as a metamorph or, or just to give you an example. When I started, uh, when I found bodybuilding, let's put it that way. I saw, in 1982, I saw this bodybuilding competition, okay? And it was for women. And Rachel McClish won the Olympics at that year. And I said, I want to be like that. I want to be like her. So I got the picture in my head, and this is the way a bodybuilder looks. They're not the same anymore. But you get the picture, right? And then Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was one of my favorites as well. So I had his book, which was really thick and all kinds of uh, workout and training methods that that he used so that was my goal to become like them so what did I have to do I, I, I ate I the nutrition has to be on the correct basis I had to know my anatomy what kind of a body I have what kind of consumption of nutrition do I need there's a lot of information that you have to do if you want to have a goal to get there the groundwork has to be done correctly so you can build up your temple. 
your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So how do you treat your temple? There's a lot going into that as well, but you have to have a good groundwork to the basis, okay? So exactly what the training horses that I used to used to train them as profession, not that much anymore though, because Jesus Christ is first. I seek him all the time. I want to have answers. I want to know more and I want to grow and mature. I'm not in the milky phase anymore, people. I do the word. And so as you confess yourself being a believer, you should do as well. Because unless you do, you will have no fruit. And Jesus is seeking for the fruit. It's not by doing the by the works. That's the Catholic lies. That's not the truth. Jesus never told you to do that. In James, it is clear you will know. No, in James, it is clear faith without works is dead. And if you don't have any works, you will never see the miracles and the healings and all of the things that Jesus told you to do. That's being obedient and listening and doing. You're not saved by doing and works. But the Catholics are telling you that's a lie. You don't get any points and, and good boy, good girl. You did well. That's not what it is. So look into Matthew, first of all. Let's start from there. I'll go into the dominions if I remember because there's so much things that I want to give you today. So I hope you have your pen and paper and uh, write them down because you've been lied to. Okay, we have like in the Protestant Bible, First of all, let's let's start from there and dig in. Protestant Bible, Evangelic Lutheran Bibles. Now Martin Luther King came out with the 95 Theses. Look it up, read it, and that's your homework. And it has the Protestant Bible has 66 chapters, okay? It has 66 chapters. And uh You have to understand that's not the whole truth. There's a lot of chapters taken out of the Bible in the Protestant Bible. There's over 81 chapters, depending on the way they divide those chapters. But Catholics, they have the Apocryphia. There's like... Um, uh, maybe 84, 73. It depends about the chapters, how they divide them. But in uh, NRSV, there's like in the Old Testament, there's like 39, in New Testament, 27, and there's 18. And, well, you can look it up for yourself. I'll leave it to that because there's too many much information. If I give it all out to you, you will not seek but I'd urge you to seek all the chapters that are missing from the Protestant Bible. Now that is protest. They protest against the truth. Okay. Most of us have that one. If, with the Catholics, they have like, with, like I said, 73 chapters, more or less, depending on a translation. Look into the Apocryphia. There's, um, Apocryphia has... Um, I wrote down everything, and now I totally forget them. I know them, but when I have to start talking to this camera, I forget. So, seek, and you will find. I would urge you to read Jubilees. I urge you to read Enoch's books. There's like three different translations. There's like the Slavonic, and then there's the Ethiopian, and the Ethiopian... Uh, has the most of the chapters of the whole Bible. So I urge you to seek. It's all out there, but you have to seek. There's so many, much information to Jesus Christ, the Judaism, to the whole big picture. If there's, you know, when you build up a puzzle and you lost one of the, the puzzles, you will not see the whole picture, right? When you lose two puzzles from, from your puzzle, when you're working on a puzzle, the, the picture gets more disrupted and you cannot find all the notches to build the picture of what it looks like. And um, I want to read you from Matthew 23 because this is really relevant. 
Woe to the scribes and Pharisees. That's in Matthew 23. We'll start from chapter 1. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Okay? Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works. For they say and do not do. You understand the difference? You can speak with these lips as much as you want. You can, you know, they're hypocrites. You, you praise with your lips and you look all good and, you know, you go, okay, let's, I'll be sarcastic a bit. You have your uh, clothing, for example. You only want to wear Armani, Gucci, Versace. All of that is just outwardly look. You know, just like Jesus said that anything you put into your mouth is not defiled when they said they didn't wash their hands. But everything that comes out of your mouth, that'll defile you because death and life are in the power of the tongue, remember? So anyway, let's go. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, but all their works they do not do to be seen by men. There's your uh, Gucci and Versace and Armani. <sighs> they make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love their best places at feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplace, and to be called by men Rabbi, Rabbi. But you do not be called Rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father. And what does the Catholics do? The Pope, they call them father and kiss his hand. Okay, and what did Jesus just say? Do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You do not want God to uh, put you down. Humble is being humble, and you... When you go, go into some places to listen to something, always go to the back. Do not go in the front unless you're called to be in the front row. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, that's in 2313, hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourself, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. 15. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. 16. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he's obl obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or, or the temple that sac sanctifies the gold? Do you understand what sanctifies is? It's a set apart. Set apart. 18. And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obl obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift of or the altar that sanctifies the gift? 20. Therefore, he who swears by the altar swears by it and by all things on it. 
He who swears by the temple swears by it and by who, him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guides who strain out and a gnat and swallow a camel. 25. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. This is the heart matters. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Now I want to stop here for you to understand and get this. This is Jesus talking about your heart. What kind of a heart? Everything that goes inside is not filthy. Okay? That what you have inside... That and what you carry in your mind, have you renewed your mind to the Word of God, which is in Romans 12 too? Because if your heart hasn't changed when you got born again, if you haven't changed, you're not born again. If you still live like the world and do as the world, you're not born again. But when you are the light of the world and the salt of the world, and you do the word, and your heart is changed into pure love because you've been purged. You know, you will be humiliated if you try to exalt yourself. This is really hard to describe, but when you are renewed, if you still live like the world, how would one know that you're a believer? Because one cannot call himself, a, I'm a Christian anymore, because it's a broad way to hell in that way, because many are hypocrites and lip service all they do, but their heart is not correct. Their heart is not renewed to the word of God. You have to be a believer in Jesus Christ and you have to have faith in Jesus Christ and trust in God with all your things and do not lean onto your understanding many can talk and say whatever the, whatever you know but it's all about the way you are it has to show that you're the light of the world and yes people do not like you when you speak the truth they will hate you when you mention the name of Jesus all hell breaks loose. Haven't you noticed how the devil is at the end of the rope because he has been released from the thousand year chains. He has been released long time ago and he is in a hurry to deceive people telling that you're something that you're not. You with your pronouncings, your vows and whatever. Hello, God created man and female in his image end of story you can keep on believing the devil's filthy lies as much as you want but you will be judged it is common people you will be judged by your deeds and thoughts so be sure that you're not soulish you need to have discipline now if you can't even fast Without grieving, your flesh is telling you what is right and what is wrong. I work with obese people. I had like up to 100 clients a week with obese people. So I know as well what I'm talking about on that situation. Obese people have the most excuses of their behavior. Alcoholics and drug addicts have the most excuses of their behavior. All addictions are excuses to do sin. 
all excuses will lead you to hell. Because if you're not ready to make a change, no one can do it for you. Discipline. The Bible teaches us clearly to have a sound mind. There was this one guy, I'll get back to this, because it's all about discipline. It's all about choices. You choose every single day what kind of a clothing you're going to wear when you wake up in the morning. But it's automatic because you have taught yourself to do things in one way, not the other. And when somebody comes and tells you the truth, you get offended because I've always done it like this. You know how many times I've heard that? Working with horses and their owners and they think everything is okay when the horses are suffering. The horses lack nutrition. The horses are disobedient in their own words. When the only problem is the human itself because it is not educated to understand horse behavior, herd behavior, and we're all, we're all the same. We're all the same. But it's all individual in that point as for how much are you ready to get the goal done? Are you ready to work for it? Or you just want to have excuses not to do it? Let me tell you, we all have the same hours in a week, right? 168 hours. The thing between me and you and the difference are the way I use my time, the way you use your time. I don't have excuses when I want to get to the goal. I have always been really disciplined. If I want to reach out to something, reach and do my research and want to get, you know, the, all the information that is out there, and I'll be doing it until I get the results. Okay, do you understand me? I'm no different than you. I just do different choices to get to the goal, what I'm looking for. As a bodybuilder, it was a life. It was, it was life. It was life. It was all what I was doing was eating and training, eating and training, teaching others, other people to train, to eat correctly. Laziness. Now the world wants you to have self-pity with you. I know you don't want to hear this. Oh, I've upset so many people by telling you the truth. Having a self-pity party with you will not get you to results. Having excuses to avoid the results won't get you to the goal. It's all up to you. I'm, you know, I'm just telling you the ways to do it to get there faster if you want to do it. But if you think that you're tired after work, you don't want to do it, you don't have the time, you just want to go and lay down on the couch and think about nothing and empty your mind, well, Satan loves you for sure because you're not seeking the Lord because he's out to destroy you. So you are blinded. You're blinded and you have the veil on your mind and you don't see the truth and you don't even hear the truth no matter how much I say it because you get offended by my words. In Isaiah 5.20, woe to those who speak evil for good and good for evil, sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet, and so it goes on. And offenses must come, Jesus said, offenses must come because the servant is no greater than the master. So, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you broad of wipers. Uh, let's get going. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, your Armani and your guests and all of that. But inside are full of dead men's bones and uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not be partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are witnesses against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your faith's father's guilt, serpents, bride of wipers. How can you ex escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore indeed I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous bloodshed on the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berashiach, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar, assuredly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So what is your excuse now? Excuses are made for losers. And this I say with all love and respect. Because when I used to be a personal trainer, as I was the first ones in Finland, so when people wanted to get results, they knew my reputation, they knew that I was really frank and I was bold and I was always blunt in the things because I didn't waste any time. I, when I used to go to the gym, I usually worked out to 40, 40 minutes and I didn't talk to people. I wasn't there to socialize. I was there to do my job, what I was supposed to get to, to, to the results. Uh, people just, you know, socialize, talk and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, two hours at the gym hello and then you wonder why you didn't get any results you're there to talk and gossip but if you want to get results you have to be the doers of the word when you see the results when you see the miracles of healing when you see the demons getting out of the people they are set free from alcohol drugs uh, pornographics, lust, oppression, depression, all kinds of things. Heal the cancer, all kinds of diseases, whatever the devil has thrown at you. If you really want to get results, start doing it. You have to believe what Jesus told you. You have to believe his word because he is the Logos. He is the word that became flesh. He is. And everything is out there. In the history, you can find Jesus. Your evolution theories are from the devil. Luciferian round table guys. They don't want to know. They don't want to tell you the truth. Because if you find out the truth, you can rebel against them. But now the people are rebelling against God. Telling that God is not helping them. So what are you doing for the kingdom? What is your excuse this time? You don't have time? You're tired? Well, you know what? Jesus is the word. And the word is life. Rivers are flowing, flowing, flowing. Waters are flowing rivers out of your belly. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. I don't understand why people do not want to find out the truth. And have the energy which is life. You're not depressed. You're not sick. You don't have any addictions when you live in the truth. But you have to get to the truth. By seeking first the kingdom. With all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And what are you doing? You're calling your buddies. Telling how poorly you are. How things are not working out when you are to ask God. Ask anything in my name and you will receive. But those things are not your desires because your heart has changed to the desires of God. And God is a good father. You will not know your father unless you 
pick up the phone, in other words, and call him. Read what has he written for you. Your first thing to do is make a choice. Stop blaming God for your problems. You're not seeking him. Start blaming Satan because Satan is throwing those arrows, fiery arrows at you, not God. God can't do anything without your approval because he gave you free will. You have to choose. Who do you worship? Satan, who is the God of this world. It's in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 4. Or do you worship God, the creator of heavens and earth? Then you know your authority and dominion on earth over all the creepy things and things under and on earth on the animals, but not over humans. We do not have the authority over humans, but the devil wants you to think that he can do whatever he pleases because he uses fear. If you fear you do not know what God told you. God said that he did not give you the spirit of fear. He gave you love, power, and a sound mind. And perfect love cast off fear because in fear there is torment. Four years back, we already saw in 2020 what happened. You all were afraid. Oh, you were afraid of those little buggies. There you saw the first thing that they threw at you to control you and to control what you think, to control your mouth, to control your nose, your sneezing and all of that. Who did you listen to? The devil's puppets. If you do not know the truth, how can you be set free? Seek. This was a long, long teaching. I'm trying to be very frank here because I love you and telling you the truth is loving, not offending, because God has written his law on your heart and on your mind. You know what is right and what is wrong because that's the moral laws that we all have in our hearts and when you get offended i urge you to think why why did you get offended because you're emotional and soulish and you have not renewed your mind to the word because it doesn't matter what the world tells you. It doesn't matter what the world spits at you. Whatever. You're of the world and like the world if you get offended. Think why. If you get offended by my words today, I urge you to seek your heart issues. Seek why. Why did you get offended? Because the truth will set you free. If you live like the world and want praises and worship to your egoistic things, you're of the world and you're carnal, double-minded, and you will not get anything from God. But when you renew your mind and repent, Repent is that you turn away from your sins and you go back to the Father. Ask his forgiveness. Forgive anyone who has ever hurt you in any way, then the Father will forgive you. Forgiveness is a horrible, horrible thing what you can do to yourself. You think you're strong when you do not forgive someone who ever did something to you. Let me tell you, spoil alert, you're weak. If you do not forgive, you're weak. Jesus forgave you. You're setting yourself above Jesus. What did he do for you? 
He didn't know you because you were still in the darkness. But he died for you when you still were in the darkness so that you might come to the light. And I'm not judging as you people also keep twisting the word that you cannot judge. God is love. God is love. Yes, God is agape. And what is agape? God is love. God is love. His kind of love is the one who dies for you. You think those fornicators and people of the world would die for you when they don't even know you? Jesus knew you from the beginning. He has his chosen ones and his elect ones. He has them. Narrow is the gate. So be sure to enter through the narrow gate. Start thinking about where are you going to go when you die. As a lot of people are telling, I don't think about that thing. I don't know where I'm going. If you think you're going to heaven... And you do not accept Jesus Christ, well, you're not going to heaven then. Because you're turning your back to Jesus, you do not believe in him, you're going to hell. It's very clear in the Bible. Anyone who rejects Jesus Christ and fornicators do not get to the kingdom of God. I don't understand. It's two ways. Either you read the Bible and you see what is written for you. For knowledge or you don't open up the Bible at all being ignorant if you know the truth and you still don't do it you're sinning if you see a beggar on the side of the road do you help him or you sp or do you spit at him Jesus loved sinners and beggars he didn't come for the righteous, you with your Armani and Gucci's, showing the outwardly appearance to people. They're the swines on the field rolling in the dirt. Do not give anything holy to the dogs and cast your pearls to the swine. I would have loved if I would have had somebody tell me these things straight in the beginning when I gave myself as a living sacrifice to Jesus. It's not about me. It's about you all out there. So you will find out the truth and you will be set free from all of your addictions I want you to listen to this for real. You cannot be like the world if you keep telling others that you're a believer. You cannot be like the world if you do things still the same way as it used to do before you found Jesus. Be different you have to be the light it has to show and be the salt it has to hurt and salt is by telling people the truth when they do not know the truth it'll hurt they get offended but you have put in the seed and see how it will grow or will the devil come and snatch it out of them parables of the sower. So, I urge you to seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. Knock and it will be opened. Seek. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of teachings. There's a lot to read. Like I said, I have so many Bibles. And I don't have enough time to read them all. But through the translations, yes, I do what God tells me to do. I listen and I obey. Anything which is not out of God is from the devil. 
I hope this will give you some tools to seek God because he loves you. He wants you to come back home. He will take care of you no matter what. He will give you good gifts. Why wouldn't Father give good gifts to his children? Do not be deceived. Romans 1.25 from there on. Read. What does it say? People are blinded. They live in the delusion right now. Wake up. God is a good father. Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. This is the truth. Seek. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.